Today on Engineering Newswire, we're propelling biobots with rat's blood, creating a dancing robot Gangnam style, and blowing up James Bond's Aston Martin. Augsburg-based Voxeljet has brought 3D printing to the big screen. In the recent James Bond flick, Skyfall, 007 is back to driving his classic Aston Martin. But what happens when the movie producers need to blow up a car for a dramatic display? They certainly weren't going to turn a classic into a fireball. So prop shop model makers commissioned Voxeljet to 3D print James Bond's Aston Martin. The company could have easily printed the legendary sports car in one piece at a scale of 1 to 3 using their high-end VX4000 printer, which can build molds and models in dimensions of up to 8 cubic meters. But the prop makers were pursuing a different approach. To keep the DB5 model true to its original, 18 different parts were 3D printed and assembled in a way almost identical to the real thing. Once the model was printed, the pro shop builders meticulously assembled and finished the components painted them in the original color, and then added chrome applications. After the finishing process, it is almost impossible to distinguish the Aston Martin models made on the Voxeljet printer from the originals, even in those close-up shots. 3D printing seems to be seeping into every industry, and what better way to celebrate a well-built design than to watch the thing explode? No Bon joke. I just can't get that haunting Adele song out of my head. Virginia Tech's Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory built a humanoid robot, Charlie 2, back in 2011 as a platform to help those with disabilities cook, clean, and carry items. The Charlie series was also built as a research platform to study bipedal walking and autonomous behaviors for humanoid robots. Charlie 2 improves stability and speed in walking, intelligence and autonomy, and soccer playing skills. Honored as Best Invention of the Year in 2011 by Time Magazine, Charlie 2 features 25 degrees of freedom, 3-axis rate gyros, and 3-axis accelerometers with joint position encoders. It has a top speed of 1.4 kilometers per hour and weighs 12.1 kilograms with a structure made from aluminum alloy, titanium, carbon fiber, and plastic covers. Virginia Tech took the next logical step in Charlie's evolution and taught it how to dance, Gangnam style. Such exciting news calls for a little robotic dance off, PD and D style. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Nachin and Dasaro on Inga Jogging Yoja. Copy Hanjane Yo, you're on a pump yog in the Yoja. Bami Om Yashin Jangi to Gawajin and Yaja. Good on Ban John in the Yoja. Researchers at the University of Illinois are sprinting ahead of the synthetic biology field with new non-electronic biological machines. They're created by 3D printing the soft gelatin-like polymer hydrogel and combined with the heart cells of rats. The biocompatible bots are 7 millimeters long and capable of walking, with the, of walking on their own based on asymmetric actuation. Resembling a tiny springboard, each biobot has one long, thin leg that rests on a stout supporting leg. The thin leg is covered with cardiac cells which beat, causing the long leg to pulse and propel the little biobot forward. It also resembles my many failed attempts at performing the worm. Since the motion can indicate how the cells are responding to their environment, researchers envision a day when they can be used for drug screening and chemical analysis. But that's just scratching the surface. Soon the team hopes to integrate neurons to help direct motion and build cells that respond to light. Sure, you've built the body out of spare parts and now you want to give it a break. I can't think of one single example of such a process going awry. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! When I hear the name Brutus, I think of the Shakespearean character that off Caesar or the farmer beefcake. Well, this Brutus is neither man-eating nor tragic. It's just plain awesome. Built as the SUV of motorcycles, this nifty two-wheeler sports a single-cylinder, four-valve, liquid-cool, 750cc engine. With electronic fuel injection and two-speed CVT with optional reverse gear, 
Brutus may look like a massive bike, but it's expected to weigh only 485 pounds, which is equivalent to your average Harley, putting it in the same class as the Ducati, Multistrada, and BMW 1200 GS. The most obvious difference of Brutus is its rims and tires, which are 6 inches wide at the front and 7 inches wide at the rear, dimensions normally associated with sports car tires. It will be available with various accessories and add-ons, including this nifty snow kit for those of us here in Wisconsin. Oh, that's some heavy-duty snowmobile in there, eh? The Nanotech Institute at the University of Texas in Dallas has created new artificial muscles based on carbon nanotube yarns that are one-tenth the diameter of a human hair. The nanotube yarns have a paraffin wax inside of them that's used for actuation. In one example, researchers were able to power the muscles by using the simple light flash from an ordinary 100 watt lamp. The heat from the bulb caused the paraffin wax within the yarn to melt and produce the actuation. The artificial muscles can lift weights up to 100,000 times heavier than the muscle itself and are capable of high speed torsional actuation. The muscles could one day help power robots or even create intelligent and impervious textiles. And who knows, maybe one day you could even implant them into humans and all you need to do is flip a switch to get your swole on. The Nanotech Institute is that way. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For PDND TV, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire.